Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we want to welcome everybody to our online broadcast worship experience, our online service. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today, but we do believe that God has directed and led you here. So we just want to welcome everybody in this morning. We want you to go ahead and click your shares, um, share this message with everyone, uh, click your likes, hit subscribe if you're on our YouTube channel, and we want you to hit the notifications button so that you can be alerted um, for all of our uploads to our YouTube channel, our content for your spiritual enrichment and edification. We want to also welcome our first time visitors um, to our online worship, our virtual worship experience. We thank God for you today. As I said, once again, I don't believe it's by chance that you're here, but I do believe that there will be something that'll be shared that's going to bless your life. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel and myself, we want to welcome everyone. If this is your very first time, we want to acknowledge you we want you to put you can put in your in the dms or put in the, the comment section i'm a first timer we just want to love on you and appreciate you so much for you tuning in there are many other platforms that you could be on today but we thank god that you've chosen to be with us today so y'all i'm telling you i'm excited about today and uh for all of our spirit of fire people we just our spirit of fire nation we want to uh just say we love you we appreciate you so much thank you for your all of your prayers and support over the years and we just thank god um i'm i'm a i'm a preach man i'm a preach today i'm gonna I'm share my heart today with some things and um as as some you can tell uh we're in a different setting today um at first i wasn't gonna share but i was gonna share a little bit um i've been in COVID protocol for the past few days and um been isolated and so um, coming out of it now. So, but I thank God for your prayers for people who did know, um, there was just an attack that hit my body the, the past week, but I, I made a decision. And on last Thursday, I think when I did the spirit of fire at home, I taught on healing. And that was the first day that symptoms hit my body. And I told someone the other day, I said, I made a decision. If Satan was going to attack my body, I was going to attack him with the word of God. And so I thank God that um, symptoms were, were minimal. And so um, I thank God for that. I was vaccinated, am vaccinated. And so I do encourage those to go out. But that's your decision and your choice. Um, but I do thank God more so than the vaccination. I thank God for the blood of Jesus and the word of God. The word of God has always been my greatest immune uh, system, my greatest medicine to take. But I also did want to be uh, practical and take the vaccination as well. So just want to tell everybody that's why I'm in a different setting. I'm kind of isolated today um, uh, from everyone around me. So I'm setting this up. It's a different setting today, but I'm so excited that you're tuning in today. And I thank God for all of you. I'm strong. I'm healthy. I feel great. And so um, I'm so looking forward. But it was very interesting um, just during this time of isolation. Um, I had an opportunity. I wanted, you know, it's, it's a statement that came up to me the other day in my mind and I thought about it. Never waste a crisis. Never waste a crisis. Sometimes when you're going through things, sometimes we just so focus on going through the thing that we don't take time to utilize it, to build, to learn, to grow, to develop. And so even as I begin to just be quiet and by myself and even away from my family in the house, that's that's been interesting um, to do that, uh, to say the least. And so just simply to be able to see people face to face um, and to love on people. And I miss you guys so much. And so I believe that um, very soon that once we lock in our new location, um, that we're going to be coming together more because I want to see you all. I really want to I believe it's, it's important for the, the brothers and sisters to come together in unity. But for right now, we're still virtual um, because we want to be mindful and um, protect you all. But at the same time, we want to make sure that we don't function. We never function in fear, but we want to make sure that we use wisdom and what we're doing and gathering facts and intel and and praying and being led by the spirit of God as to what it is we need to do. So I just wanted to share that uh, with you guys and tell you we just love you. We appreciate you so much. And so we want you to be in tune today. I want you to be in tune. I want you to be engaged in this word today. 
Um, so let's go ahead and have a word of prayer and we're going to get into the word of God today. Praise God. Father, we just thank you for this. Another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you, Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge and good understanding of the word of God. We do approach your holy written word reverently. And so we give you glory and we give you praise for it. Now, we pray that every ear is anointed to hear this word. Every heart is open and ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. Father, we do cover the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration. And we give you praise and glory for it now in advance. We thank you right now that your spirit, the spirit of wisdom rests upon us, the spirit of might, the fear of the Lord. We thank you that you are a holy God and we love you so much and we appreciate you so much. And Father, this is our year of expansion. This is our year of acceleration. This is the year of the catch up that you've already revealed unto us. So we thank you for super supernatural advantage advancement, supernatural acceleration, supernatural increase. And so we give you the praise, glory, and honor for it in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Well, y'all, we've been talking about the, this being the year of acceleration, this being the year of the, of the big mo, the law of momentum. Well, not necessarily being the year, but momentum. We've been teaching on this series. And as we've been teaching on this series, the law of momentum also, God has switched me into dealing with your identity and your authority. And so even with understanding who we are in Christ, he says, in order for the believer to experience and for my people to experience this acceleration this year, they're going to have to understand two key and major things. Number one is their identity. And then number two is their authority. Because nothing will happen in this earth except a man prays because God has given us authority over the works of his hands. And so now he's given us the responsibility to allow him to grant him access through the avenue of prayer and obedience to his word and then following and functioning in his principles and his laws that he can now get involved in our situations in life and cause things to change and to rearrange. God has given unto us wisdom. He's given unto us everything that pertains to life and godliness, but it's your job. It's my job. It's our job to begin to now exercise that authority, to exercise those, those rights and exercise those privileges. And so the last time that I taught you, I, I begin to talk about our identity in Christ, who we are in Christ, because if you don't understand who you are in Christ, then you won't begin to function in the, the authority, the power and the privileges and the rights that we have as believers. And so we want to make sure that we function, that we understand those things. And so just as a quick recap, um, as a quick recap, we talked about us being um, created in God's image and we understand the fivefold blessing that God gave us authority in the beginning in the book of Genesis, chapter one, verses 26 through 28. And he talked about God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness and let them have dominion. In other words, let man dominate in this earth over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creature thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. So God gave us authority over creation. And so he says now, so now God created man in his own image In the image of God created he, him, male and female created he them. So he gave male and female dominion and authority. So we are supposed to rule and reign together in this life. So from the very beginning, men and women were to rule together on this planet because man in the, in the beginning during creation, as God brought the animals to Adam to name, Adam realized there was nobody like him. So God created someone else like him that was suitable, adapting and fitting. So God pulled woman out of man, out of the rib of man. God created Eve. And so now he brought Eve to Adam. And so now they were to connect together, to rule, to reign together in this earth. And so now he says this, and he blessed man. He blessed, he blessed. In other words, he empowered us to prosper, to have success, to have dominion, doggone, in his time. 
I don't care if, if you have not been experiencing dominion in areas is listen, is is how, how do, I was, I was going to be straight up. It's your fault. It's my fault. If we don't function in the fullness, it's because of usually lack of knowledge or lack of execution of the knowledge that we have. And so God wants us to get understanding of this, that he blessed mankind in the beginning and now told mankind to dominate, to rule. But watch this. He blessed and said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So we need to have this mentality that we are blessed of God, that the blessing is upon mankind. This is why you see men in the earth doing great things because God blessed mankind. Listen, at this point, there were no Christians. He blessed mankind because everyone that he created was supposed to have been created for his glory and have fellowship with him. And so we understand that sin entered in. Satan came in, deceived Adam and Eve. And so then they ate of the fruit, the, the forbidden fruit. And then all of a sudden sin entered into the earth. Jesus came to restore man back to his rightful place. Okay. And so now that this, 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 this provision has been made by Jesus, we have to receive it by faith for by grace are we saved through faith. And so when we receive now the newness of life and everything that comes along with it, that everything that pertains to life and godliness abides on the inside of our born again, human spirit. And so God says this, you've been made now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are an ambassador for Christ. You are a citizen from heaven. And so once we understand this, now our minds need to be renewed to this so that now we can begin to walk these things out. So now now, this is, is going to be the kicker. Now, as I begin to teach this thing, I gave you all of those scriptures. I want you to go back, look at that message and really get the word in you. So this time, God really dealt with me about teaching my people doctrine, showing, sowing the word on the inside. I've been releasing prophetic words to you. And so now you've received those prophetic words. But now we need to go to the word of God to get it embedded in our souls, our minds, our will, intellect, emotions, imagination, and now begin to release it in our lives. My pastor says it like this. We need to renew our minds and release from our spirit because your spirit man is already alive under God. But Paul says in Romans that we need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So that's the process that we're going through now. We want to renew our minds to this word to know what we're to do, how we're to function, how we're to flow in this earth, in this planet. All right. So today I really want to, I want to dig in. We talked about being kings and priests. I really encourage you to go back, listen to that message um, that I taught. Uh, it may have been two Sundays ago um, and it's dealing with the believer's authority and not the identity. So we want to pick up today. We talked about the identity, but now I want to really deal with our authority because the Bible declares that we are citizens of heaven and because we're citizens of heaven and we are ambassadors for Christ, we are representatives of heaven. And so now we are authorized dealers of the power of God. We are the authorized dealers. We're to function in this earth. We're to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Jesus said it like this. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. So that's the right. He says this greater work shall you do because I go to my father in heaven. And he says this because it's more of us functioning like him. More should be done in this earth. Just like Jesus functioned, we're to function. Even in first John, it says, as he is, so are we in this earth as Jesus is. So are we present tense? This is the identity. This is the identity we need to have that we are Christ representatives. So when people see us, they see Jesus. When people see us, they see our father. They see God manifested in the flesh. Glory to God. God manifested in the flesh. Mm. So we, we, we need to function like this. And then this, this is going to be important because when you understand that and a situation arises, you realize who you are and you recognize, wait a minute, this does not belong in my body. This does not belong in my life. I can change and rearrange this thing now. 
in Jesus name. I can change and rearrange. I can change and rearrange this thing. Whatever is happening, I can now cause this thing to, to be changed and rearranged. Why? Because God has given me authority and power to change it. He's given me the ability to change it. Stop waiting on God to do something he's given you authority to do. He's given us authority to change and rearrange things, to speak with the words of our mouth. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm already getting excited about this thing. So I want you to go with me to the book of Mark chapter four. I wanna, I wanna show you something. The book of Mark chapter four, verses 35 through 41, and it reads this. And it says, and the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, this is Jesus, let us pass over unto the other side. Now that's important because Jesus spoke his will. He spoke what his will was, was to pass to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there was also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. OK, and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow that a preach in and of itself. In the midst of a storm, Jesus was sleeping. In the midst of all this chaos going on with the water coming into the boat, Jesus still on the back part of the ship asleep on a pillow. How could he rest through this? <clears throat> now watch this. Now this is interesting. Now look at Jesus' posture and position, but look at the disciples. And then it says this, that he was behind the part asleep on the pillow and they awake him and said unto him. So they woke him out of his sleep. They woke him from his rest. Now watch this and say it unto him, master, carest thou not that we perish? Don't you care? Because they felt like because of his response in the midst of a storm that he didn't care. It's not that he didn't care. He just knew what his will was. And he was already resting in the fact that we're going to arrive where we said that we were going to go. Now watch this. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Why are you so fearful? Why are you afraid? Why are you spazzing out over this situation? How come now? Now, listen, th this is this is something man. you got to understand this. Jesus is rebuking them for waking him up in the midst of a storm. Now, most people would say, listen, they have every right. They got the son of God in the, in the ship with them. And now they see this storm rise up. And now they say, master, master, where are you? Now, all of a sudden, many of you said, no, I would have rebuked the wind like Jesus. No, no, you wouldn't. Have. You would have done the exact same thing they did. Why? Because they weren't developed into this authority and power as of yet. But at the same time, Jesus demanded some things of them. He now rebuked them and said, why are you afraid? Now watch this. Now watch this. How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly. They feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and sea obey him? Now you got to remember this. Remember in the beginning, God gave authority, dominion over fish of the sea, excuse me, over the, all of creation. Uh, he gave man authority over the, over all of creation and everything that's in it. And so with this authority, the same way Jesus rebuked the wind, the storm, there was a level of expectation uh, that he had for them to do even what he did. He had to understand he was here to teach by example. And so now he rebuked. Now, watch this. If it was just a thing of how, how do I want to say it? If it was just a thing that he said, if, if the will of God being automatic or if it was his will just being automatic versus and I, and I want to say it the right way. And I, I want to make sure I, I get the point across. If Jesus didn't want to, if Jesus didn't think that the, the, the obstacles would stop them from moving forward, he would have just gone back to sleep. Uh, hear me what I'm saying. I'm trying to make sure I'm saying it the right way. He would have told the disciples, now didn't I say we go into the other side? 
Now, let me go back to sleep. Have faith and trust God. Trust me and let me go back to sleep. No, he didn't do that. What he did was he got up and he rebuked the thing that was coming against them. The reason why I believe that he rebuked the disciples was because they should have done what he did and should not have had to bother him because they realized, number one, the master is here with us. Now, when and see, we rebuke you and command you to settle down now. Now that this is important because now our master has trained us how to function in this earth. Our master has given us authority to function along with him. So now watch this. This is going to be important. This is going to be important because now God, Jesus rebuked them for being afraid. He says, how come you don't have faith in this situation? Why are you fearful? And that's the question he's asking. Why are you so afraid? Why are you so afraid of what you're going through? Don't you believe that I'm with you, that I'll never leave you nor forsake you? Don't you believe what my word says? I've given you a, a authority and power of all the ability of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Did I not tell you submit yourself unto me, resist the devil and he'll flee from you? Did I not say whatsoever things you shall say, doubt not in your heart, but believe that those things which you say shall come to pass. You shall have whatsoever you say. He says, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? How come you don't have faith now? Have I not done things for you in times past to let you know that I'm with you? And so why are you allowing this situation to rattle you when I brought you through the last situation? How is it that you have no faith? Man, this is important. This is so important that we need to remember and remind ourselves of the greatness of our God. But watch this. The greatness of our God, but the authority that he's given and granted unto us to function in. So that now we can transform things. We can rearrange things. We can cause things to happen. Now, I want you to go to the book of John 14, verse 12. And it says here that verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, <clears throat> shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do. Why? Because I go unto my father. So Jesus now says, OK, when I leave and go to my father, this is the beginning of the New Testament church. Now that I've died, been raised from the dead, and now I'm seated at the right hand of my father, people can now become born again off of faith in what I've done for them. Now, once you've now come into the family of God and received the spirit of adoption, whereby you can cry, Abba, Father, or God, our Daddy, now you have this same authority that I function in, you can function in. Now, he says, greater works shall you do. Why? Because there'll be more of you. It's not just me functioning in this manner. Now you have the ability to do so. You have the ability to do so. You have the ability to do so. You have the ability to rebuke a storm just like Jesus rebuked a storm. You have the ability to lay hands on the sick and see him recover just like he did. You have the ability to multiply and increase just like he prayed over two fish and five loaves and increase. You got that same authority. Listen, I, listen I, I, I've shared this with some of you. Some of you have heard this. Some of you haven't. Several years ago, um, my family and I, we were living while we were living in Atlanta, we had some house guests that came over to our home and my wife had baked some barbecue chicken, some little chicken wings, wingettes. And uh, it was really just for us and our family at that time. And um, so there weren't a whole bunch, but we had fr um, friends that came over. It might have been about four people, three to four people. I think four people, maybe it may have been more. I'm not sure. And. They began to ask, could they get something to eat? And we were like, sure. So we prayed over the food, blessed the food. And I, my wife would tell you, it was like after the people had gone in and eaten, there still seemed to be almost the same amount of chicken in the pan that was in there when it first started. And later on, my wife was like, Mike, there's no way that that same amount, this amount of chicken should still be here after everybody grabbed some and ate some. 
it was only really enough for us at that point to eat, but we shared it with those that came. And even as we blessed that food, just like you pray over your food and bless it, we blessed it. And we believe that there was, there was, uh, listen, you believe what you want, but we believe that God multiplied that food for us to be able to feed the people that we received into our home. And it was a man of God that was brought over and God had a word for him and that we ministered to him at the same time. And so I'm telling you, God, listen, we, we've seen God do things supernaturally and manifest supernaturally. Why, why wouldn't that happen? Jesus said the same work, these things that I do, you're going to do, but greater works you're going to do. And if he multiplied by blessing the food, breaking it and distributing it to the people, we have that same ability and authority to bless, to increase, to produce, to develop and multiply. Did he not say, I want you to replenish, multiply, subdue? There's the spirit of increase on us that we should be able to multiply resources. See, I, I, know, I'm, I know I'm getting somewhere with this. If we're going to believe the Bible, we're going to believe the Bible. If we're going to take God at his word, we got to be confident in the fact that I have this authority, <clears throat> I have this power, and I have this ability. Glory to God. Now, let's go to the book of Luke 10, 18 through 20. Luke 10, 18 through 20. And he said unto them, Luke 10, Luke chapter 10, verses 18 through 20. And he saith unto them, he said, he said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Then he says this, behold, I give unto you power. Now, this word power is translated exousia or authority. I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power. Now, this word power is translated dunamis, meaning ability of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. He says, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So he says this, I've given you authority over all the ability of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you or harm you. I declare in the name of Jesus that nothing hurts me or harms me physically. Nothing hurts me or harms me mentally. Nothing hurts me or harms me spiritually. I declare because I've been given authority over this thing. I've been given authority over all the ability or the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt me or harm me. I declare it in Jesus name. That's how we need to begin to talk. That's how we need to begin to function, that we are not going to be afraid of the terror of night nor of the arrow that flies by day. No, uh-uh, a thousand to fall in my right hand, 10,000 my left hand or, or at my right, and nothing shall come near me. This thing will not come near me. This thing will not be unto death. This thing will be transformed. This thing will be turned around for our good. Whatever this situation is, we make a decision right now in the name of Jesus to exercise our authority to declare that all things are working together for my good right now. In Jesus name, glory to God. John first John four and four. And I quoted this. Um, I think I might have quoted this earlier. First John four and four says this. You are of God, little children and have overcome them. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he greater is he greater in degree, greater in power, greater in number. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. The greater one lives on the inside of us. Now, I need you to say this, say greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Now, watch this. First John 4, 17. I said this earlier as, as, as well. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. As Jesus is, so are we. As Jesus is, so are we. Oh, man, you are Christ's image. You, you, you are his reflection. You are his body. I am. You are. We are the body of Christ. 
We are his reflection in the earth. And so we're to function as his reflection in the earth. We're to function in this dominion and authority and power. We're to walk in wisdom. We're to walk in love. We're to walk and demonstrate God's grace. We're to demonstrate his mercy, but we're also to demonstrate his power. Glory to God. Now, I'm going to end on this today. We release our, how do I release this authority? How do I release this power? We release this authority and power through our words. That's the number one way we start off walking in this authority that we can declare and decree things and see those things in our lives be established. Now watch this in Matthew 12, 37 in the amplified classic, it says it like this. He says, for by your words, you will be justified and acquitted and by your words, you will be condemned and sentenced. So a man is also too in Proverbs, it says, we are snared by the words of our mouth. We are snared or captured by what we say. So out of the abundance of the heart, scripture says the mouth speaks. So whatever's in your heart in abundance, when you speak it out of your mouth, it is enforced into your life. So we have to be very mindful as to what we're speaking and saying. Number one, what are we pouring on the inside of us? Are we pouring doubt and unbelief or are we pouring faith on the inside of us? Because words are containers. Words carry whatever is in the heart of the person that's speaking the words. So if fear is filling your heart, then as you begin to speak, you're going to speak fear filled words. If faith is in your heart, when you speak, you're going to start speaking faith filled words. This is why it's so important to guard your heart for out of it flows the issues of the forces of life. It says in Proverbs, we have to guard our hearts because it's so important because if we got our hearts. It'll impact what we speak. And then it'll impact what is in, what is enforced in our lives. And so we have this dominion and authority to create with the words of our mouth, just like God created in the beginning with the words of his mouth, that as he spoke, it became. And so it came out of God, the imagination of God to create the heavens and the earth out. Listen, he always was, always is and always will be. I'm telling you. And we've been created in his image and likeness to create. So we declare in the name of Jesus that we create well and we build well with the words of our mouth. Now watch this. You get the image in your head of what it is that you're believing God for and you now get the faith. And how do we get the faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So no word, no faith. So we pour God's word into our hearts, renew our minds to it, get the image of that thing in our minds and begin to speak or create with the words of our mouth. And now angels, the Bible says, hearken to the voice of God's word and they are like the construction workers that now you get the image in your head, just like a, a architect designs a blueprint that is given to the contractors to begin to build according to pattern. So whatever you have on the inside of you, the image that you have on the inside of you will now be the thing that you speak out of your mouth to create and angels will hearken. Watch this, but they hearken to the voice of God's word. So they will help you enforce and create and build the thing that's in alignment with God's will for you, which is in alignment with his words. So and when you speak the word, you'll speak the thing and angels go to work for you to create the thing that you speak in with your mouth. So we want to speak abundance. Watch this because they have pleasure. God has pleasure in the prosperity of his children. That watch this, when we speak life over our lives, when we speak life over the situation, angels hear and they hearken to now assist us in creating the thing and manifesting the thing that we're speaking. This is so good because now we decree things and they are established. We let just like as a king and a priest, we legislate laws in our lives. We're the kings of our kingdom, of our domain, our sphere of influence. And when we speak, God is saying this, I need you to start creating because there's going to be supernatural power release. The more you believe this and walk in this, the more you will see creative power manifested. I think it was William Brannon. Um, I, I believe it was him um, years ago. The spirit of God spoke to him and says, there's coming a time where men will begin to see immediately what they speak and it'll be created right before them. 
He said, God, if this is you, let there be a white squirrel sitting out on the ledge of my window. And the minute he said it, he opened up his eyes. He looked over. There was a white squirrel sitting on the ledge of his window. God was showing him that when you create, this is the, okay, come on, God, come on, God. He says, this is the authority that I've given unto my people that they need to renew their minds to who they really are to start seeing these supernatural works on a regular basis, that the supernatural will be a common thing, that there is an explosion of faith, an explosion of the glory of God, where God told me, he spoke to me, he says, there's going to be a blending of the spirit and the word. In other words, there are a lot of people who teach the word, but there's no, there's little demonstration of the supernatural power of God to the degree that we, that the Bible teaches. He said, there's some people who, who function in all spirit and no word. He says, no, you can't do that without my word because the spirit and the word agree that they're big on spiritual things, but little on teaching the word of God. God says, no, I need you to teach because even in the book of Acts, it says Jesus began both to do and to teach. He demonstrated and he taught on what he demonstrated. And so there needs to, needs to be signs, wonders, miracles, supernatural things taking place so that now as men and women begin to see and children begin to see the power of God working in our lives, then we can now teach them. This is what this is. This is that that was spoken of the prophet Joel. This is that that the Lord Jesus himself taught us as to how to function in this matter, that I can speak to that tumor that now tries to attach itself to my body and that tumor must shrivel up and die and come out of me. Whatever it is, I don't care. Cold symptoms must come out of me. I don't care. My mind is sharp, alert, and attentive. Then I don't care right now if glitches have happened in your body, things that are not going well. Listen, you speak to your body parts. You have dominion and authority. Lay hands on the part that's not working properly. And you command it to be healed. You command it to be well. You command it to be whole in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Yeah, Jesus said to himself, whatsoever things that we shall say, doubt not in our hearts, but believe that those things which we say shall come to pass. We shall have whatsoever we say. So this is our time to begin to speak in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, whatever you decree, whatever you decree, whatever you decree, whatever you decree is established and the light of God's favor shines upon your way that when you speak the answer, that's glory to God. He says this. Stop speaking the problem and start speaking the answer. And when you start speaking the answer, the enlightenment of what you need to do for that thing to come to pass will begin to happen to you. So when you say and stop saying, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. We have to correct our language, folks, to begin to say, no, I know all things. The greater one is in me. The spirit of truth and wisdom abides in me. So no matter what's going on, I have the answer in me. I have the answer. I have the answer. Now what I need to do is pull that answer up, whether it's through praying in the Holy Ghost until the Holy Spirit reveals it to my mind from my spirit. Oh, I declare with my words that I have the tongue of the learned. I speak a word in season. I have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God is formed within me. I know what to do and how to do in any and every situation. And Father, I thank you that you give me the blueprint. I have the blueprint and I build my life according to the pattern of your word. So I declare and decree, I take it step by step, everything that's going on. When I don't know what to do right now with my children, uh-uh, God says, Father, there's wisdom. You know what I need to do. You know what needs to be said. You know what needs to be spoken. I don't know what to do about my life and career. No, you, yes, you do. I have the answer. God has already created a prearranged path for my life. And then that path is the good life. I'm, I'm already, I declare that I walk in the, com the comfort of God, the counsel of God, the comfort of the Holy Ghost. I declare that fear does not come near me. I declare I'm delivered from oppression and fear does not come near me. Satan has no power over me. I have all authority and power over him and nothing shall by any means hurt me or harm me. I declare it in Jesus name. And so that's what we do. We speak words of life. I declare that I'm a creative spirit. 
I create with the words of my mouth. So building, I call you forth in Jesus name. I call forth. Yeah, you have all the spaces that I need. A house, I call you forth. I call my five bedroom, three and a half, four bedroom, uh, four bathroom home. I declare when I pull up, it's an aggregate driveway, circular driveway with a fountain in the front of it. That when I open up the doors, there's a spiral staircase, whatever it is you desire, that it has ample room, great room, that everything is right now in this position with excellent decor. I declare right now, stainless steel appliances. Listen, see, that's the image. Get the image and start speaking according to pattern. Start speaking according to pattern. Write it down. I remember I did that with my first car, I believe God for. I wrote it down. I got the image of it. I wanted a black car, four door, automatic, everything, sunroof, good on gas, excellent, that it was easy for me to pay for. I even spoke at that time the amount I was willing to pay every month for it. And I said, I'm, listen, I wrote it down. Two hundred at that point, two hundred and ten dollars. My payment was two hundred ten dollars and fifty six cents or forty something cents. Only a few cents off. And I said, I'm well able to pay for it myself to put the down payment on it. Everything. I think I had to put down two hundred dollars on it. And I did it myself. And I, all I need. Listen, at that point, my mom co-signed for me at that time. But listen, I released my faith, drove off of that lot with that thing. And it was everything I believed God for. I wrote it down, prayed over it, sold seed according to it. I began to plant into ministry and say, I begin to sow and I begin to plant, releasing my faith to believe God. And God told me, I remember, he says, the same principles that you use to believe me for that first car, the same principles that you use to believe for any and everything. You got the image of that thing on the inside of you. You began to pray. You did the initial prayer of petition and requesting for it. And once you believed, you receive it. All you do is begin to thank me for it. And you begin to thank me, but watch this, faith without work is dead. Then you begin to step out on faith and go look for that car. Go look for that thing. And watch this. God showed up and showed out and gave me exactly what I believed him for. And God will do the same thing for you. See, that's part of walking in that authority that, listen, somebody can say, well, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I ain't got no help. I ain't. No, nah, don't you do that. Uh -uh. God will use every resource. Listen, this is where you declare God's favor over your life, that God is raising up people to use their power, resources and influence to assist you and to help you. So I don't care if you feel as though right now you don't have any help. You need to declare your help. You need to declare that God is using people to use their power, resources and influence to assist you and to help you. And, and that God is raising you up to be able to use your power, resources and influence to assist and to help others. Glory to God. I declare it in Jesus name. It's time to walk in this authority. We'll continue on some of these lines, but we are going to walk in this authority. And we declare that this is the year of acceleration. This is the year of the catch up, that there'll be things that are going to accelerate now for us from this moment forward. We believe it. I mean, from you purchasing the home purchasing process, the, listen, the debt cancellation processes that you coming out of debt quickly in Jesus name. Uh huh. Healing processes are quick that your healing happens now in Jesus name. Glory to God. So, Father, we thank you. We bless you and we receive it now in Jesus name. Amen. Glory to God. Listen, I want to have every head bowed, every eye closed. If you never made Jesus the Lord of your life, y'all, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is the time. This is the time. You never made Jesus the Lord of your life. You need to make that decision today. And it's as simple as repeating this prayer. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord and I make you the Lord of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now in Jesus name. Amen. Now, I want you to say this also. Thank you for transforming my life, Lord. Now you promise me the gift of the Holy Spirit. Say this, say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. You're now on the inside of me. I now have the ability to speak with other tongues. 
as you give me the utterance in Jesus name. Amen. Glory to God. Now let's begin to worship God. I want you to begin to open up your mouth, begin to speak. Some of you may feel this power surging through you. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, but thus spake he of the Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Receive. Receive the Holy Spirit now to flow through you. And he's there for you. He's there as your helper. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'm telling you, he's there to assist. He's there to help. And so we can teach you more about who the Holy Spirit is and the power that he's given and granted unto you. And there may be somebody you don't have a church home. And listen, we want to welcome you to Spirit of Fire. We want to listen. We want to be your pastors. We want to be there for you. Listen, this is the place that God has called you to be. Listen, I highly recommend that you get connected today. He told Elijah in the, in the Old Testament, he says, go to a certain brook. And there will I sustain you. And God calls the ravens to come and to feed them supernaturally. Wherever God has called you to be is where your supply is. And so God will call you to connect to a place where you're fed the word of God. You're developing his word and you'll grow in his grace. And so listen, if that's you and you don't have a church home and you want to connect with us, just send us a message at info at spiritoffire.us. Info at spiritoffire.us. You can email us. You can also send us a message or DM us in our um, social media platforms. Let us know, hey, I want to get connected. Or if you want to find out more about the ministry, then you can do so as well. Also, there may be somebody that, hey, you you're already a part of a church. You have pastors, but you just feel a connection. You've been feeding off the word. You've been, you know, some people come on in and watch and listen. And you've been doing it for a while. <clears throat> and you feel as though, hey, I want to support what they are doing. So now you can become a partner with this ministry and now to assist in, in helping to accomplish the vision of teaching God's people who they are and now being a blessing to our communities, surrounding areas and to this world. And so we thank God for you. So if you desire to become a partner with this ministry, you can reach out to us at the same information at info at spiritoffire.us or send us a message on our social media platforms and we'll have one of our staff to get with you to show you how to obtain and maintain what you came to receive. Well, y'all, at this time, this is first Sunday. And so this is our time of communion where we partake of communion. I want to give you an opportunity to go and to get your elements right now that, um, and I know they play it in the, in, I think in the announcements and everything, but we want you to go ahead and, and grab something real quick. You can grab crackers, bread, get some juice in the cup, put your Kool-Aid in there, grape juice, whatever you want to. Uh, we want to honor God um, and honor the Lord Jesus by honoring um, the communion table. And so now in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 32, it talks about Jesus says, after um, that he established this communion and with his disciples. But watch this. He said he took the cup and he took this bread. He says, this bread is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you do it, I want you to do it in remembrance of me. He took the cup in the same manner. Also, he says, in this cup is the New Testament or the new covenant in my blood. So what does that mean? That when Jesus died, he shed his blood for the remission or the taking away of our sins. Jesus died for the sins of the world. And so when we partake of communion, we're recognizing what his blood has done, which has washed us and cleansed us from our sin. Well, watch this. The penalty that was attached to the sin as well, the judgment Jesus took on his body. And so because of that, we receive forgiveness of our sin. And now we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus through faith in Christ. And so now he says, with my body, he says, this, this, this bread represents my body, which was broken. It was broken for you. He says, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Jesus took um, 39 stripes on his body with the cat of nine tails. This, this whip who had like pieces of, of, of like metal, stone, and sharp objects that would go dig into the flesh <coughs> Excuse me. It would dig into the flesh and rip out chunks of flesh as it went in. So, I mean, Jesus was beating to the point that he wasn't recognizable. I mean, just think about it, looking like hamburger meat. Just just it was just torn and tattered. See, the, the pretty pictures that you've seen, even in the, um, the movie, The Passion of the Christ, 
If you've seen that movie, that still doesn't fully depict. If, if, if it was shown, it would be such a gruesome, like a horror movie to see how his body was just, just mauled and how they disrespected our Lord. But he did that for us so that we can experience divine health and healing. And so right now, when you partake of this communion table, you recognize and remember everything that Jesus has done for us. So let's begin. Now, Father, we sanctify these elements <clears throat> and we set them apart for the purpose of communion. And so we thank you and we give you praise that we recognize what Jesus has done for us. Lord, we acknowledge you. We love you so much. We appreciate you dying for us, being raised from the dead for us. For without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And because of what you've done in your body on that cross at Calvary, we receive healing of every sickness, disease, anything that will try to come is already healed and made whole in Jesus name. Jesus said, this is my body, which is broken for you as often as you do it. Do it in remembrance of me. Let's eat. He said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Let's drink. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, y'all, glory to God. Yeah, you are healed. I am healed. We are healed and made whole. Well, at this time, we, we um, are going to what we call opportunity for prosperity time, a time where we can sow and we can give. And um, some time ago, I want to share this real quick. Um, in the beginning, I believe it was on New Year's Eve around that time when I shared this message. Um, it may have been the first Sunday. And I haven't shared it um, since then. And um, I want to make sure that I reminded you guys that we want to do what's called the tithe challenge. We understand that now the tithe is the first, it's the tenth. It's the first tenth of our income or our increase. And God has promised, even according to Malachi 3, he says this, as you begin, he says, he started off in verse 8, he says, will a man rob God? And, and then the question was asked, how have we robbed thee? He says, in tithes and offerings. Then he says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house or supply in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing and empowerment for success that you won't have room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer. Who's the devourer? Satan is. He comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. There may be many of you that you've gotten off, that you haven't tithed in years or that you, you just, you've now taken what is God's and now kept it unto yourself. Even in Leviticus 27, it says that the tithe is holy. It's God's. It's holy. And so we want to make sure that we understand the benefits of it. God is not trying to get, take something from us. He's trying to get something to us. And so now because, <coughs> excuse me, tithing is a trust relationship with God. Will we honor God and trust him with our money and our resources? Because we recognize he's the one that blessed us with the ability to get it. And so now we're bringing back to him what he's blessed us with. In the book of Genesis, um, it talks about, I think it's Genesis 14, when it talks about Melchizedek and Abram. That when Abram came from the battle of uh, Chedorlaomer, that he came and he brought tithes of all, of all the spoils. Now, God did not, at that point, there was no law instituted saying that you had to tithe. But Abram, out of his heart and appreciation for what God had done to him, for him, and granting him victory in the battle, that he gave tithes of all to the priest, the high priest Melchizedek, and who is now the image of Christ, not having father or mother, beginning or ending of days, that they didn't know where he came from. But watch this. And then... Um, Melchizedek released the blessing upon Abram and said, blessed is Abram of the most high God. And so then he gave him tithes of all. And so there was an exchange that, watch this, Abram gave this tithe, the blessing was released by Melchizedek. And so now from here on, we see the pattern 
of tithing throughout the Bible as men will begin, men and women will begin to bring up their substance to honor God with this first tenth. Now, anything over and above that is is considered an offering. But now we understand because it comes out of your now we people debate whether it's the gross or the net. Listen, the only reason that the net is there is because Uncle Sam doesn't trust you to go ahead and, and pay your taxes a certain way. So for those, depending on how the structure is and the companies and all that, they take taxes out from the front. They take theirs up front. And so we still listen. If, if Uncle Sam is sowing. It's taken, I mean, excuse me, it's taken. Um, here's why don't we honor God with ours? And to say, okay, God, because you blessed me, I'm going to honor you with this. I'm going to honor. I know for some it, that's a battle because your money is already, for some many people, their money is already allocated. And so we need to begin to learn. I think too, we need to begin to learn. <clears throat> even from a budgetary system or budgetary mindset to begin to factor God in first before anyone else. See, listen, pay God, honor God first, pay yourself, and then begin to produce. You can do what's called a 10, 10, 80 plan where you go ahead and tie 10%, save 10% and live off of the 80%. And just that simple, this just simple. I'm not even talking about investments and other things that you do. But as you begin to do this, as we honor God and put him first, he has promised to rebuke the devourer. He has promised to bless us and increase us more and more. And so now it's not um, because tithing was implemented before the law implemented during the law and even after the law that watch this the spirit of it is god we get to do this not we have to do it but we get to do it and we get to honor you because now you blessed us and so i want to challenge we want to do a 90 day tithe challenge 90 days listen i'm gonna say it like this if you do it for 90 days and nothing happened and you don't you're not better as a result you you stop doing it because it's between you and god now now, this, this, this between you and God, it's, it's a heart relationship. It's a heart. Listen, it's a trust relationship between you and God to now show God that you trust him with your resources. And now at the same time, watch God honor his word on your behalf. Watch God honor his word on your behalf. So this is the first Sunday in, in February. So we go from the first Sunday in February. We have February. We have uh, March. We have April. So now we know February has 28 days in it. I don't believe this is a leap year. So we have 28 days in February. Um, you have about 30 days in, um, excuse me, in March. So even if we take this opportunity to say, okay, we got this time, 28 days in February, 31 days in March, and then 30 days in April. We wanna do for these next three months, so that'll go kind of into the beginning of May. So now from this point to the first Sunday in May, let's just begin to say, okay, we want to honor God and be, be disciplined in honoring God where the tithe is concerned and to say, okay, now that this is going to be the thing. I want you to listen to me because I don't want you to just what, what we would call back in the past uh, bucket plucking. We just throwing the, the money in the bucket, but right, right now everything digital. So before you release it, I want you to begin to tithe the tithe. What do I mean by that? When you tithe the tithe, you begin to speak words over that tithe. So it's when you release it, I want you to declare and to decree that as I tithe, God, you're faithful to your word. That you said in your word and you begin to quote, even out of Malachi, that you will rebuke the devourer for our sake. So that the devourer, Satan, is rebuked off of our stuff, off of our bodies, off of our minds, off of our families, off of every situation. And that you open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon us that we don't have room enough to receive it. So that means, Father, we receive your overflowing, abundant favor, grace and increase in our lives now. And so in the name of Jesus, as we sow this tithe, we release this tithe in faith and we expect to receive all of the benefits as we do so. So as you do that, 
I want you to now, husbands and wives, come into agreement that we're going to factor God in this year. And listen, I'm believing with you for acceleration, accelerated favor, things opening up, doors opening that no man can close, things happening for you, your children, and your children's children as a result of you obeying God in this area of the tithe. So from this day, from this Sunday to the first Sunday in May, I want you to make a decision. Get in the habit of doing it and factor God in. For some of you, it's something as simple as you just make adjustments in your food intake and going out to eat. You eating up the tithe. That the tithe you just spend it at Wendy's, Burger King, McDonald's, the restaurant you just went to, versus going to the grocery store and just buying groceries and making your meals, planning your meals. Listen, factor God in. Some of you just something that simple. Budget him into the fact that we're gonna factor God into this budget, and he's gonna get the first. He's going to get the first. We want to show him that we're honoring him. Now watch this. Now I'm going to begin to teach some of these areas and give you some of these scriptures. And what we want to do is assist you in this. So <clears throat> what I may have to do is, uh, and I'm looking to do this, I'll create, I'll create a confession that you can begin to speak over your tithe as you're releasing the tithe into the ground that you speak over it. Because I tithe, and God, we used to do it years ago, just coming up in ministry. Because I tithe, and God is faithful to his word, there is meat in my house. Because I tithe, and God is faithful to his word, that he rebukes the devourer for my sakes. I declare and decree, I'm blessed coming in, and I'm blessed going out. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the lender and not the borrower. I declare that money cometh unto me from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I declare that I'm out of debt. All of my needs are met. I have plenty more to put in store in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I declare it and decree it. And Father, we thank you. We give you praise for it in Jesus name. That's what we're going to do. Amen. So listen, there's some information coming up on your screen. And listen, we want you to we want you to commit to this. We want you to commit to this. They say, listen, I'm in. I'm in, Pastor. I'm all in. I want to now. I'm going to commit to tithing. Listen, sometimes it may be, it'll take discipline. Sometimes, especially in that beginning phase, when you're getting back into the rhythm of doing it. And I understand. I know how it can be. But listen, I'm telling you, tithing will change your life. It will change your life. I'm a witness to it. It will change your life. It will help. It will assist. It will, man, I'm telling you. It's time to get back into your rhythm, get back into the rhythm of honoring God in this manner. And so now there's time to get some things back. And what God is doing, he's getting things. He says it's time to get things back in alignment and back in order. This is a time of alignment and order, which will cause acceleration. See, see, because no word, no faith, because if you don't hear on it, sometimes if I don't teach on certain things, faith levels go down. But now you got to teach the word so that your faith can be increased in that area so that now you can begin to obey God in that area and begin to see the fruit or the results or the productivity and increase from that area. So now the information is coming up on your screen as to how you can sow, how you can give. There's a QR code that it'll take you to a secure page, um, different means, whether it's the cash app, um, uh, maybe Zelle, the things of that nature, Venmo. I'm not sure as to all of the, but it's coming up on your screen. Um, you can text through giving, um, give by texting rather. I think that number is up on the screen and, um, it'll show you how to sow, how to plant. And so now we're in agreement with you for divine increase and supernatural increase. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the obedience of your word, uh, that we obey your word and that we see the increase or the fruitfulness of your word. So we give you praise, glory, and honor for it in Jesus name. Amen. All right, y'all, as you're sowing, as you're giving, give in faith, be in confidence. Remember, remember, remember that, as, listen, the Bible declares in first um, in um, Isaiah 1 and 19. Um, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Scripture even talks about Isaac sowing in the land of famine. And in that year, he received a hundredfold. Expect the hundredfold. Expect the increase. <clears throat> Expect the increase. Give and it'll be given to you again. Good measure. Press down, shaking together and running over. God will cause men to give unto your bosom. We thank God for you, your continued support. We love you. We appreciate you all. Continue to pray for us as we pray for you all as well. 
and we love you so much. So now as, as we release today, I'm going to give you the final benediction and I want you to receive it. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare your favor over your people. I declare that they increase more and more them and their children. I declare that they're blessed coming in, going out the head and not the tail above and not beneath. And so we give you praise, glory and honor for it in Jesus name. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Love you guys. See you next time. Peace.